we have the industry trends and developments that we have witnessed in the last few months. Post this, our CFO, Mr. Gopal Balachandran, will share the financial performance of the company for the quarter and the year ended March 31, 2022. The industry registered a GDP growth of 11.1% for FI22. As per public disclosures, the combined ratio of the industry was 119.2% for 9 months FI22 as compared to 110.4% for 9 months FI21. And the industry reported a loss of 4.05 billion rupees as against profit after tax of 55.6 billion rupees for 9 months FI22. Further, the overall combined ratio for the private multi-line general insurance was 112. Point, uh, 112 in nine months FI22 as compared to 104.6 in nine months FI2021. The industry's solvency at nine months FI22 was worsened to 1.71 times as against 2.07 times at nine months of FI21. So moving to the quarter under review, the industry delivered a mixed performance. As for the data published by CM, the new vehicle sales witnessed tepid growth of private car segment on the back of supply chain uh, supply chain challenges. The two-wheeler segment remained far from recovery, while the commercial vehicle segment has shown growth supported by underlying demand. Health insurance, on the other hand, contributed significantly to the overall industry growth in line with the expectation and is now the largest contributing segment to the GDP of the industry. The commercial lines witness robust growth in sync with current market environment. Coming to the business impact for us, the company has grown its grown in line with the market growth of 12.7%, this is excluding crop and market, as against the lower growth that we witnessed till nine months of FI22. Within the quarter, the growth momentum has increased each month and the company has significantly outgrown the market in the month of March 2022. Coming to the growth for key segments during the quarter, for motor, the company has grown faster than the industry and we have now attained market leadership in this segment for the year. Our investment in the retail health side has started to show results and has resulted in our agency channel premium growth of 29.5% for the quarter. As indicated in our previous calls, of the 1,000 retail health agency managers to be added to our employee base, we have now onboarded 750 of them during this fiscal and the balanced 250 offers have been made. We expect the growth to accelerate in the, accelerate in the next few quarters as the sales force starts getting productive. The corporate agency channel, including bank issues, is back in the black with overall growth of 19.4%. Within this, ICICI bank distribution grew, grew by 24.9%, primarily driven by health indemnity, SME, and motor business. And other distribution partners acquired through the integration grew 15.9% during the same period. Our business source through our website grew by 20%. Within this, our health business grew by 23%, travel grew by 130%, and motor grew by 10%. Business source through strategic alliance partners in the digital ecosystem grew by 98.2%. Overall, our digital solutions has enabled us to increase our digital revenues by up to 7.74 billion for the current year, which accounts to 4.3% of our overall GDP. As for the commercial lines are concerned, we experienced robust growth driven by 17.8% growth in the SME segment. Let me now give you an update on some of our other key initiatives. On the integration, I'm very happy to share that as we speak, ICC Lombard stands as the second largest non-life insurer in India. Exactly as envisioned while evaluating the scheme as a potential transaction, the integration enabled us to strengthen our market leadership augment and further strengthen our diverse distribution channels. The revenue and operating operational synergies synergy plans are on track, and Gopal would talk about this in detail uh, in his segment. Our IL Take Care app has surpassed 1.3 million downloads with successful submission of over 1,30,000 claims and over 70,000 teleconsultation requests. The recently added feature face scan helps users to keep a track of vitals such as blood pressure, heart, heart rate, respiration rate, etc., all without any additional devices and from the comfort and safety of, of one's home. I'll Take Care is built to be user-friendly and, and a continuous engagement platform, which is increasing our ability to cross-sell. We are also pleased to share with you that we are the first large insurer to move our entire core systems uh, onto the cloud this year. 
In our data center, we had about 110 applications across 600 servers and around 1,000 terabyte of data. Moving our complete setup onto cloud has given us some immediate benefits, including stability, availability, and scalability. As such, some of the investments that we have made during the year in distribution and technology is bearing fruit, and we expect to see momentum and growth as we head into the next financial year. We intend to continue with our expansion across distribution, digital, technology, and claim services. Towards this, we have planned additional investments in the range of rupees 1 billion to rupees 1.5 billion during this year, during the coming year. I will now request Gopal to take you through the financial numbers for the recently concluded quarter. Thanks, Bhagav, and uh, good evening to each one of you. I will now give you a brief overview of the financial performance of the company for quarter 4 and FY 2022. We have put up the results presentation on our website. You can access it as we walk you through the performance numbers. The effect of the demerge in the financials have been incorporated in the form of opening net worth as on April 1, 2021. Further, the financials for the current year represent numbers of the merged entity and the comparative numbers for the previous year in the financials pertain to standalone ICC Lombard and hence are not comparable. The company has enhanced disclosure requirement of reserving triangles by giving separate reserving triangles for motor third party and non-motor third party lines of businesses. This is in accordance with the regulatory guidelines on public disclosures, which is applicable to all the players in the market. You may refer to slide number 29 and 30 of the investor presentation on the reserving triangle disclosures. Our gross direct premium income of the company was at rupees 179.77 billion in FY2022 as against rupees 140.03 billion in FY2021. The industry reported a double digit growth of 11.1% on a lower base for a similar period. Our GDP growth was primarily driven by growth in preferred segments, given that our approach has always been growing business sustainably. The fire segment GDP was rupees 27.5 billion in FY22 as against rupees 21.58 billion in FY21. As indicated in our results presentation, the overall GDP of our property and casualty segment was rupees 50.24 billion in FY22 as against rupees 39.29 billion in FY21. On the retail side of business, GDP of the motor segment was at rupees 82.8 billion in FY22 as against rupees 70.2 billion in FY2021. To harness the potential of these segments, we have been expanding our distribution network to increase penetration in tier 3 and tier 4 cities. Our agents, which include the point of sale, has increased to 88,539 as on March 31, 2022 from 81,969 as on December 31, 2021. The advanced premium numbers was rupees 33.68 billion as at March 31, 2022 as against rupees 34.59 billion as at 31st December 2021. Resultantly, combined ratio was 108.8% in FY22 as against 99.8% in FY21 and 111% in 9 months FY2022. Combined ratio was 103.2% in quarter 4 FY22 as against 101.8% in quarter 4 FY21 and 104.5% in quarter 3 FY22. Our investment assets rose to rupees 387.86 billion at March 31, 2022 from Rs. 374.54 billion at December 31, 2021. Our investment leverage net of borrowings was 4.23 times at March 31, 2022, compared to 4.23 times at December 31, 2021. Investment income was at Rs. 30 billion in FY22 as against Rs. 21.96 billion in FY21. On a quarterly basis, investment income was Rs. 7.06 billion in quarter 4 FY22 as against rupees 5.37 billion in quarter 4 FY21. Our capital gains was at rupees 7.38 billion in FY22 as against rupees 3.59 billion in FY2021. Capital gains for quarter 4 FY22 was at rupees 1.36 billion as against rupees 0.66 billion in quarter 4 FY21. The successful integration of the demerged business of Bharti XI into the company has led to optimization of our organizational structure rationalization of offices, efficiencies in claim settlement practices and technology applications. This will result in an annualized synergy benefits of rupees 2 billion, of which rupees 0.7 billion has been realized in FY 2022. Our profit before tax was rupees 16.84 billion in FY 22 as against rupees 19.54 billion in FY 21. 
whereas CBT was rupees 4.1 billion in quarter 4 FY22, as against rupees 4.5 billion in quarter 4 FY21. As explained above, the company has seen higher growth momentum in Q4 FY22, and within that, in the month of March 2022. Due to the current accounting norms, this results in upfronting of sourcing costs, whereas the benefit of earned premium will be realized over the policy period. Consequently, profit after tax was rupees 12.71 billion in FY22 as against rupees 14.73 billion in FY21, whereas profit after tax stood at rupees 3.13 billion in Q4 FY22 as against rupees 3.46 billion in Q4 FY21. The board of directors of the company has proposed a final dividend of rupees 5 per share for FY2022. The payment is, however, subject to approval of shareholders in the ensuing annual general meeting of the company. The overall dividend for FY22, including the proposed final dividend, is rupees 9 per share. Return on average equity was 14.7% in FY22 as against 21.7% in FY21. The return on equity for Q4 FY22 was 14% as against 18.8% in Q4 FY21. Solvency ratio was at 2.46 times at March 31, 2022 as against 2.45 times at December 31, 2021, which continued to be higher than the minimum regulatory requirement of 1.5 times. As I conclude, I would like to reiterate that we continue to stay focused on profitable growth, sustainable value creation, and safeguarding interest, interest of policyholders at all times. I would like to thank you all for attending this earnings call, and we will be happy to take any specific questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone? who wishes to ask a question, may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Shreya Shivani from CLSA, please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. So a couple of questions I had. I'll uh, probably just take two and then get back in the queue. Uh, first one is on the TP high rate uh, that was announced and uh, what is the in, what is your feedback on how comfortable are you with the kind of hike uh, that the regulator had proposed? And if you can help us get to an idea, uh, in, in spite of the hike, I think given that the car underlying car sales is still weak, if you can help us understand how much proportion of your motor TP book is private cars. That would be the first question. Second is on your, uh, so just looking at your March 22 uh, data, month the monthly data. So the, uh, uh, the, uh, the trend in your motor TP book was quite strong. And it was uh, stronger than the industry for, for that matter. So if you can give me, uh, so if you can help us understand that. And lastly, on the loss ratios for fire, it's uh, come down quite dramatically in this quarter. So if you can help us understand that. The question. Um, thanks, Shivani. Um, so let me uh, take the questions and the answer, give the answer in the same sequence. So if you look at the... Uh, PP rate hike, uh, it's different across different segments, but uh, the long-term PP rates hike is uh, is a bit higher. Overall, at a portfolio level for the industry, it weighted average uh, increase comes to roughly about 3 odd percent, plus minus. Um, uh, you know, honestly speaking, given the uh, general inflation that we see, uh, we would have uh, liked to see slightly uh, higher rates in certain categories. In certain, certain categories, we are fine with the rate uh, hike that has been given. Uh, so, in aggregate, maybe a little bit higher would have been uh, appropriate is uh, our view on this. When is it expected? As of now, the understanding is that it will come around May. Uh, so, that's where we are on the TP uh, hike. Uh, in terms of the mix, I'll ask Gopal to answer the mix point on the, on the private side. Yeah, so, uh, sure, as you can see, uh, so far as the, we have given on this slide, uh, the split of OD and TP, which is roughly about 40.68 billion is zone damage and about 42.12 uh, billion is third party. Within that 42.12, private car third party will be about 13.49 billion. Coming back to your question on uh, on uh, growth, I think what's uh, happened as we've been kind of uh, explaining for the last few quarters is that we took some calibrated call on uh, 
uh, kind of uh, readjusting our portfolios away from certain private car segments, given the pricing competition that we saw on the private car and the own debit side, and increasing uh, on the CV side again very calibrated, very selective calls based on uh, you know ground level insights plus some experimentation that we've been doing for the last three years to uh, to figure out if uh, some of those books are going to be uh, you know better risk for us. Now, when in retail, when you cut down, you cut, you know, the 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 number goes away immediately. But to build up, it takes some some time. So, I think on the commercial side, the growth momentum is now picked up. And what we've been kind of uh, indicating is that if you look at our overall portfolio mix, unlike the market, where uh, out of the total motor book, roughly 45% would be uh, commercial vehicles. For us, that was in the teens, maybe you know, 15 to 17%. That, as we've been saying, that should go to roughly in the mid-20s. Uh, so that journey has now started. Uh, we will have to see if we can maintain the momentum of growth of March, but uh, clearly the uh, the increase in the market share of CV is something that we expect going ahead. And your last question on uh, fire loss ratio share. Again, I think, uh, I think that's one segment where we keep talking about saying that uh, a quarterly loss ratio may not necessarily be reflective of the underlying uh, outcome of the performance. The better number to look at will be more, I would say, uh, financial year numbers. In fact, within that, I mean, there could be years where because of, let's say, various large losses or catastrophic years, in fact, the loss ratio of that particular risk segment could get impacted. So hence, um, quarterly numbers may not necessarily kind of reflect, as I said, the underlying uh, outcome. Look at more the annual numbers for the fire uh, part of the business. Got it. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's it. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Saraf from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So I just had a few follow-on questions from the earlier uh, question asked. So, so you mentioned that in the CV we are uh, looking at a higher uh, uh, mix in the... Uh, so what is giving us confidence uh, in terms of maintaining or containing the loss ratios in that? If you can just give, give us a few more details in the kind of experiments that you have run and uh, means where are we deriving this confidence from? Uh, secondly, if you can help me understand, I, I believe that we have taken uh, hikes in motor OD segment. So what would be the uh, average quantum of hike uh, that would, we would have taken and which kind of car segment and uh, uh, is it across the board that we have taken in the, in the new uh, or basically in the sense that for new cars or is it uh, across the board for newer and old cars? I have a few more questions after this. We'll uh, just after if you can answer this, I'll follow up here. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Abhishek. So in terms of the uh, I think we've been talking about what we've, uh, the way we've uh, handled this. Again, if you again reiterate the point, it is not as if we believe the whole CV portfolio is hardly turned uh, viable or sustainable or profitable. Uh, if you look at the overall industry mix, CV will be, as I said, between 45 to 50 percent. We are not talking about going anywhere near, near that number. Now, what we've been doing for the last three years, uh, again, at various times we've talked about this, is that based on ground level insights, uh, based on some changes that we are seeing both at in certain micro segments, certain markets, uh, based on certain usage patterns or uh, accident patterns that are changing in certain states or uh, even uh, some amount of, uh, uh, you know, the, the regulatory, uh, you know, and the compliance standards in some of these markets, we uh, have been identifying some segments that we believe are viable today than what, with what they were in the in the past. And what we've been doing as a company is that we've been taking small bets to see, you know, writing small amounts of business, uh, reserving at a level where we believe, uh, you know, it is very, very conservative, but allowing the team to write some of those businesses to see what is the uh, experience that we have over the next two to three years. Some of those experiments have proved to be in line with our expectations. So those are areas where we are scaling up businesses. Uh, so, th so that's the confidence that we are getting in terms of the, uh, the segments of business. Now, in terms of, and the approach that we are taking is not just a loss ratio, uh, you, you're not looking at loss ratio, you look at the combined ratio in terms of sourcing cost and uh, loss ratio together. And wherever there is more uh, viability, that's where we are taking those calls. Uh, in terms of, uh, in terms, uh, you know, in terms of uh, private car, uh, the uh, increase is reasonably across board. There are one or two AMs which haven't agreed, 
uh, we are discussing, but most of the areas we've taken price increases. Thanks for that answer, Bhargav. Just if you can help us understand, if you can share the uh, the quantum of hikes uh, on an average that we would have taken. It will be single digit hike. It's not as if you've taken a huge hike. It will be a single digit hike. Okay, okay, that, that's very helpful. Uh, secondly, uh, on uh, just notice that uh, in the calamity losses, uh, uh, our share of losses have actually gone up in this year. So, uh, is it? only because of integration with Bharti EXA or is there more to it? So if you can help me understand, uh, are our is our share of premium also have gone up uh, proportionately in line with the losses as well? Yeah, so this was largely the cyclone top day that you're talking about. Uh, if you look at uh, if you look at the last 10, 12 cats, our share of losses being significantly lower than our normal market share. Uh, in top day, we had Two of our corporate exposures that got hit, so it was kind of a you know unfortunate concentrated event, not uh, as if there was a large impact across board. So that's why we have a impact in the top tier because in you know in those cases we are in the western market where we have a slightly higher share than our natural market share. So when you look at a you know let's say lost share that we've got relative to the market share in these markets, they get lower. Yeah, thanks, Vargo. That's very helpful. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhukar Ladda from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah, yes, Madhukar. You are. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. thanks for, for the opportunity. Um, so, you know, your OD loss ratios for uh, ODI and TP, and especially TP actually. Uh, for uh, Q4 have risen quite materially. And if you look at the uh, quarter by quarter trend, there is quite a bit of volatility. Now, uh, you know, when we look into the future, uh, how should we be thinking about it? Should we be thinking more in terms of, you know, exit rate will be uh, more appropriate for next year? or the, the 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 full year rate as a base uh, and so what what sort of how, how do you sort of project these things or how do you look at it so madhukar uh, uh, so if you look at on the motor own damage segment i think to my mind uh, when you look at more the exit rates for f uh, quarter 4 is will be largely reflective of the trend line that one would one could potentially see so far as the way forward is concerned and the reason why we are saying is uh, in line with what we had discussed even in our uh, earlier calls the thought process is to try and see how we can get significantly into writing businesses which will be relatively uh, driven in so far as more on uh, let's say high loss ratios and relatively lower cost of sourcing late businesses uh, that's the thought process that we have in terms of increasingly uh, building the book. And that's the reason why I would say quarter four on the motor own damage is largely reflective of what one could experience, at least in so far as uh, the trend line for the future is concerned. Having said that, obviously, we continue to kind of uh, micro segment the portfolio to see which are the segments which we want to select and underwrite in terms of building the overall book. But the thought process is in line with, as I said, build a book which is relatively um, high LR and, and low expense in so far as cost of sourcing is concerned. On the third party portfolio, I think uh, maybe I think what you could, uh, the full year numbers are largely representative of what one could experience in so far as the way forward is concerned. Quarter four specifically, I think in line with what we had uh, done in quarter four of last year, if you recollect, I think there were those uh, Supreme Court judgments which had come through. This is yes. which we had to kind of revisit all the uh, outstanding cases that we had as of the previous year, and we had to kind of uh, strengthen the reserving requirements, uh, assuming the fact that we could expect an increase in average claim payout consequent to those judgments on the outstanding cases as well. On the similar lines, I think what we have experienced over the last couple of years, which is for understandable reasons that uh, uh, the courts in India, which is predominantly where you get bulk of the motor third party orders being received, that has not been functioning at full force. Uh, while we have started to see particularly maybe quarter four, we have already seen things coming back. But at least over the last, I would say, uh, three to six quarters, 
the courts have not necessarily been functioning at uh, full swing. What this does is obviously it kind of starts to have an impact in so far as the trend line of uh, settlements or, clo or closures of cases of third party that we would have done uh, relative to the historical past. Uh, which would mean, obviously, given the fact that there has been some lag in so far as the extent of closures that we would have normally seen, which could happen in the future period, we obviously have to kind of factor in for or maybe build in an element of uh, further inflation assumption as a part of our reserving book. Uh, particularly the element of interest that we will have to add in so far as our reserve, reserving circumstance. And hence, uh, the trend line for Q4 on the third party book will be more representative of what one could expect so far as future trend line is concerned. Yes. Uh, that's what Q4. I Q4. Q4, Q4 yes. even for TP. Yeah. And the other, I think one should also be mindful, Madhukar, is I think uh, given the fact that we also strengthened the reserving uh, book of uh, uh, the motor third party pool, as you would have seen in, in terms of the enhanced disclosures. Uh, yeah. This element of increased uh, interest which we, or inflation that we have to build in as a part of the reserve has obviously led insofar as the erstwhile motor pool book is concerned, we have obviously strengthened the reserve. However, on an aggregate basis, we have motor third party which is actually reflecting a small amount of reserve releases. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. Um, also, then, um, so just to add to what Gopal said, so effectively what we are looking at is the combined rather than just the loss ratio when we are selecting business. And the attempt is to bring the combined uh, more under control, not just look at the loss ratio. Right. Um, I'm, I'm guessing the comparative intensity is driving us uh, in this direction. Um, and and that's why we are seeing you know slightly probably lower commission ratios and uh, and expense ratios in four two would that be right to say, and what would be like the trend for uh, FI twenty three? So more than the competitive competitive intensity is overall driving up the overall combined for motor. But if you look at from a pure ROE perspective, uh, businesses which are high LR but low expense ratio are better businesses because the expense is upfront. LR comes over the period. Right, right. And our expectation on how, uh, you know, ex like the integration with Bharti and what should be uh, our expense ratios and, and, you know, what sort of expense ratios should we expect in FI 2024? Like any guidance on that? So, in terms of synergy numbers, Gopal has explained. So very difficult to put out a number, uh, uh, Madhukar, because I think on the one side, as we have put out what is what will be the annualized energy numbers which we put out as a part of the opening remarks, which is rough. I missed that. I, 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 I think uh, I missed that. Sorry. Yeah. Having said that, I think what we will continue to do when we look at, let's say, FI23 or maybe the year thereafter, we will want to continue to kind of stay invested in building some of our expansion plans, particularly what we have spoken about on, let's say, on the health uh, agency distribution side. We want to continue to stay invested on building our digital opportunities that we see, including the investments in technology and claim service. So to, to some extent, I think largely what we would end up is obviously we would we are pretty much on track in order to kind of realize the benefits of synergy. But at the same time, we would want to kind of use some of these to kind of uh, increase the opportunity that we see on account of the renewed growth momentum that we have seen for ourselves. So if you, if you remember what we had discussed when we did the uh, transaction, we had said that for a couple of years our combined ratio will be elevated and then it will start coming down. If you see our combined ratio for this quarter, it's uh, related to the last two quarters, it's already trending down. So that is an uh, ongoing effort that we will make to uh, keep the combined ratio uh, under control. Now we also said that uh, as, a, as a strategy rather than bringing combined down to 100 and delivering a 20% ROE, we want to keep on investing and grow the book a bit faster. Consequently, the ROE may have come down to the high teens. But directionally, the improvement in combined, that, that should continue. Understood, understood. And final question, uh, I was reading the notes to accounts, uh, there is a 65 crore payment of GST uh, under protest and, and an additional agreement to pay 40 crores. Uh, 
can you explain that uh, and and you know what is this the result of and uh, yeah the implication of any yeah so these are couple of matters that as what we have put out uh, as a part of that disclosure on the notes to accounts um, uh, as an insurance company we are entitled to claim uh, input credit in so far as settlement of uh, motor claims related expenses are concerned uh, both with respect to the arrangement that we have either on a cashless or whether on a reimbursement basis uh, in so far as the uh, gst department is concerned i think they seem to kind of uh, allege that possibly we are not entitled to claim certain inputs with respect to some of those uh, motor claim related uh, uh, expenses so that's one the second is uh, aspect is again with respect to realization of as a part of claim settlement again in the context of motor portfolio we do kind of uh, end up um, having certain element of uh, salvages uh, the view of the department is that on that particular amount of salvage uh, amount that we end up realizing there should be an element of gst applicability on on the extent of realizations that we have made uh, we have consulted uh, the uh, expert opinions as well as uh, senior counsels on this in terms of the stand that the company has taken both with respect to the eligibility of input credit on motor claim as well as whether there will be any element of applicability of gst in so far as salvage related uh, realizations are concerned the stand of the company is pretty much uh, uh, well found and, uh, we, and and it is legally correct uh so at this point of time obviously that's the reason why the amount that of 65 crores is paid under protest and another 40 crores is something that we will uh, we are committed to pay or at appropriate point of time in due course we will be filing a refund for getting this uh, amounts back but at this point of time these amounts are largely kind of paid under protest uh, what we clearly understand is obviously this is something which is applicable more at an industry level and hence to that extent collectively we will the stand of the industry is something that we will work with and ensure that uh, we are able to get the rightful amount that is due back to us understood understood so this is an industry phenomena so the tax department is absolutely this is not specific yeah. to icc lombard this both the issues are at an industry level applicable to uh, almost all the players in the market got it got it thanks thanks uh, that's very helpful thank you very much a request to all the participants please restrict to two questions per participant if time permit please come back in the question queue for a follow up question the next question is from the line of prayes chain from motila rosal financial service please go ahead yeah hi good evening everyone uh, firstly uh, could you talk about uh, the health claim ratios uh, on the retail side in particular and also on the group health uh, how have they fared in q4 and uh, uh, are they back to pre covid levels or there are certain elements which are still there with respect to covid and uh, how do you uh, uh, see this going ahead and last my second question after that so if you look at the split of uh, the health loss ratios which has been given in the aggregate on the presentation deck the break up of that in terms of uh, the employer employee portfolio or let's say the corporate book that number for quarter 3 was 93.1% that number for quarter 4 is 95.3% uh, and on the retail indemnity book uh, the loss ratios in quarter 3 was about 65.7 and for quarter 4 that number stands at about 57.6% okay. uh so also my question was uh, you know while it has you know, the retail definitely has come up and so this is more of a normalized level now and we can presume it to be in a similar trajectory going on right right so when you look at for example on the corporate uh, or let's say the employer employee book we have always spoken about saying that uh, it typically particularly the large corporate tends to kind of operate at a loss ratio which could be ranging anywhere between 95 to 100 anywhere between that and in so far as the relatively small and mid, mid corporate book is concerned they generally tend to kind of operate on again the employer employee part at anywhere between 90 to 95 which is why on a blended basis i think one generally gets to see the loss ratios which are relatively around those 95% threshold however the cost of acquisition with respect to these businesses particularly the large corporate tends to be more direct and hence to that extent on an aggregate basis on a combined ratio book it becomes viable for us to underwrite having said that 
I think over the last uh, three or three quarters, we have been kind of talking through, particularly on the employer-employee book. Given the fact that we have seen, particularly this year, the impact of COVID losses playing out, we have been affecting uh, clearly price increases um, uh, insofar as the renewal of the portfolio is concerned. While we had indicated a, a price increase in the range of 15 to 20 percent during our quarter one earnings call, but subsequently, as and when the actual renewals have happened, we have been able to cite realizations which have been slightly higher than that. And uh, even with the increased price realization, we have been able to clearly hold on to, in fact, more than 90 percent of the renewals insofar as the employer, employee, or let's say the corporate book is concerned. On the retail side, again, the thought process is pretty much similar. We continue to keep looking at the portfolio outcome in terms of what is the desired loss ratio of the book. In general, I think particularly in the indemnity book, I mean, depending on the kind of book that you write, the loss ratios could range anywhere between, I would say, 60 to 70 percent uh, on a steady state, whereas the relative cost of acquisition in the initial periods would tend to be relatively higher given the investments that we are making on building distribution. Uh, so so that's, that's what I would say insofar as steady state uh, loss experiences are concerned, both on the uh, corporate health or, let's say, the retail indemnity book. I can't. Uh, so the second question is more broad level and a slightly longer term as well. So if you look at you know, the efforts that uh, you know uh, players like you all have taken with regards to uh, uh, tech-enabled clean settlement processes on the health side or on the motor side, there have been several initiatives that have been taken. So do you see that this uh, benefit, the benefits of these efforts, will get more reflected in the pricing coming down uh, or it would translate into more uh, combined ratio improvement uh, so, what is the strategy that ILOM will be adopting in order to, you know, uh, to take benefits of these measures? So, in terms of our long-term thought process, uh, uh, this is just what you're talking about is definitely correct, but it's only one element of what we are, uh, how we are building this. So, if you look at, uh, for example, on our uh, claims, um, you know, on the health side, we have launched that AI-driven. Uh, uh, authorization, uh, you know, the ML engine for settling uh, uh, settling claims for uh, corporates. That's cu currently running at a uh, shade lower than 60%. We believe that number will keep increasing as we go along. But the approach is across multiple levels. So, uh, if you if you think about it, uh, you know, the entire approach with I'll Take Care was to look at uh, an engagement and con uh, you know and a, and a continuum of care approach with corporates and we believe there are multiple advantages of that beyond cross-sell, upsell, engagement, renewals, etc. Even at the time of claims, we believe in the longer term we will see some benefits. So we are already beginning to see that uh, all, you know, more than 40% of our corporate client uh, claims are coming, even reimbursement cases are coming through that app. Uh, we are, what we've seen in the past is when we had moved the entire claim service in-house back in 2008-9, uh, because we run the complete data and do a lot of analytics around it, we are able to control, uh, we could at that point in time control frauds better. On top of it, we build uh, a lot of capability again using artificial artificial intelligence to identify fraudulent claims better. Now, as we digitize the entire journey, uh, you know, the ability to run those engines better becomes even, uh, you, know, you know, you have an ability to run those engines even better. So we are already beginning to see some benefits in terms of fraudulent claims being managed better. Lastly, we believe if we can drive the video consultation, teleconsultation, uh, you know, as a as a model to even control unnecessary hospitalization, that could be additional benefit. So overall, there is a you know a very com comprehensive thought process in terms of using technology to uh, both give better convenience and service to customers and in the process improve our uh, relative uh, you know uh, loss costs for uh, for the health claims thanks thanks that's very helpful thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sanket gora from spark capital advisors please go ahead thank you for the opportunity uh, uh, but the price hike which we have taken in motor OD, which we have said, is, is largely limited to, to, to new business or, or we have taken price hike in the renewal premium too. And then this just wanted to check whether it is just, just limited to cars or, or even... New private car, uh, Sanket. Okay, new private car. 
So, so, so the, the, I mean, the control of price hike we have taken, does, does, will, will, will it help in improving the loss ratio, which, which are currently 68 in 22 and, and 73% is in four quarters? So, so expected improvement in the loss ratio because of this current price hike? Uh, we will have to see a few things. Uh, you know, one of the things that we are watching very closely is the uh, claim inflation because the input costs are going up for everyone. So there is a risk that there would be a claim inflation. Though till now, in spite of the inflation, the team has managed it really well uh, in terms of controlling the um, ACS, in, uh, you know, average claim size inflation. Uh, we are also, you know, driving a lot of our non-OEM source policies through our PPN network. That number has really gone up uh, this year. So, you know, so we are trying multiple strategies to prevent that from going up. But fact of the matter is that we've seen significant increase in input costs. So there is a risk that there would be an inflation because of that. Now, if that happens, then we may not be able to see that, uh, you know, benefit. But uh, our sense is that at this point in time where the private car OD loss issues are, it needs a price increase ipso facto, I mean, whether whether we factor in the inflation or not. So. Uh, so difficult to predict whether we'll see improvement in loss ratio. If the ACS inflation doesn't happen, the answer is yes. But we would have to guard against that. But, but is this an industry phenomenon that price hike you are seeing across the page to happen? Or I mean, the, uh, the reason I am asking is that is, is a potential risk for our market share loss if, if we are the only guys who have taken price hike? Uh, we don't think so because uh, you know if you see the market share the recalibration that we had to do, we effectively done this year. If you see our only market share this year has gone down largely for that reason, right? Because we felt that the pricing was not uh, adequate. Right. Uh, where we are focusing on the effort that we are building in terms of our digital and agency channels, uh, you know, maybe some of the, you know, the, uh, you know, the slightly older segment, we remain reasonably confident about holding on to our market share in uh, an OD, uh, OD side. And something that we've been saying that, you know, these two years have been unusual because you know, people have benefited from lockdowns at different times on the motor portfolio, right? Yeah. And hmm. traditionally, whenever we see pricing aggression, it lasts for 12, 18 months, and then things, uh, you know, correct back. We were talking about a pricing correction requirement even before the uh, pandemic, right? Uh, so market was, in our opinion, ready for that. And then because of pandemic, there was, people felt no need because of frequency, loss, you know, came down. We believe the market will have to rebalance and correct this year. And we are seeing the stress. Uh, we are... Seeing that even with price increase, price uh, correction that we are doing, we are holding on to our market share. You've seen our March numbers, uh, and the trend line remains, remains that way. Got it, got it. And, and, and based on the TP business, uh, you, you said that a mid teens of the contribution of CV to the entire TP business want to will reach to mid mid twenty five mid twenty. So, so, so just, just wondering that have you identified a particular product segment where you can increase that market or, or contribution to 10 percentage? Whether whether uh, is it is it like SPVs or, or auto rickshaws or or Kali Pili's, which which is these are the segments which you have identified which will drive this uh, uh, increase in the contribution and 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 so the loss ratios. Yeah, so it's not at that. It's not just at that level of uh, segmentation. It's significantly more granular, which obviously I don't want to get into, but. We've looked at down to RTO level, you know, parameters to take those calls, not just in the product. The product category obviously, obviously at no overarching level, uh, but we've done a lot more deep analysis on the ground uh, in terms of um, various factors behind, beyond uh, categories. Uh, and on that basis, we've taken this call. If you see our market share, it's not a 10% shift that we're talking about. As we speak in the Q3, numbers already come to close to 20%. So we are talking about that, that number going to mid-20s uh, mid is, uh, you know, is not that big a, big a stretch. And as I said, you know, when we started doing those experiments about uh, three years back, uh, and we've watched the data for the last three years, almost 80-85% of the experiments have uh, worked out well for us. And that's where can, we are kind of... Uh, uh, expanding. So yes, a lot more micro segmentation than those just the type of vehicle that you're talking about. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. I'll request you to come back in the question queue. A request to all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Neeraj Toshniwal from UBS Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, I uh, so wanted to understand uh, what is the aggregate level height on the motor CP now portfolio with the uh, change in next towards uh, C at the uh, 20s, mid 20s, if you talk about. Can you repeat? We, we, yeah, there's an echo. We can't understand what you're saying, Vinay. 
I think the regulator has laid down limits for all players in the market to comply with limits on expenses of management for the company as a whole. Mm -hmm. For ICSL Lombard, we are in compliance with those limits for the uh, at an aggregate level. Having said that, what the regulator has also stipulated is individual limits for some of the sub-segments of businesses within the aggregate portfolio. And in case, if in any of those sub-segments, if the actual, based on the allocation of expenses that have happened to those individual sub-segments, in case if you exceed, then to that extent, from a classification standpoint, those amounts are separately required to be given on the face of the profit and loss statement, which is why you find a large amount being reflected there. But equally, when you possibly see the revenue account statement. And there is a counter entry there, which I saw, yes. That is moving from shareholder to policyholder and then moving back to the policyholders. Yeah, exactly. So it's more a classification requirement that is stipulated insofar as regulatory guidelines as, are concerned. But as I said, for ICSO Lombard at an aggregate level, in accordance with the requirement of regulation, we are in compliance with those limits of okay. expenses. So that is helpful. That is helpful. And coming back to your second question, first question on uh, on health. Look, at this stage, uh, even Gopal explained the corporate book. It is a high loss ratio business in the 90s, but the cost of sourcing is low. So it stays in the, you know, just shade above 100, between 100 and 105. Uh, we want to continue to ride that business because, uh, you know, that, that volume also helps us in terms of the network and all the other aspects. That's corporate relationships. Plus, we are doing a lot of work with the I'll take care app with corporates to see what we can do in terms of cross sell and upsell. So uh, that's something that we want to stay invested in. But that's the kind of range that we expect going ahead. Uh, on the retail, we are investing, and that's why when I, you know, in my opening remarks, I talked about the overall investment that we are making, making in distribution and and, and technology. Uh, so retail indemnity, the 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 health agency team that we are scaling up, obviously at this point in time is reasonably high combined ratio. Uh, our sense is that you know it will take a couple of years for us for for us to see that coming in line with our numbers because we want to keep on investing, uh, you know, in that segment for uh, for some time at least for the next couple of years. So the next five years out, would 95% combined for health uh, be a number that we can work with? So I understand it will be a build up and then things will scale up. So just wanted a more longer term picture. You know, I always uh, am very worried about predicting five year out numbers because none of us can predict five year out numbers. Uh, my sense is that of course the combined would obviously come under much better control. I do not believe that the number can be a low 90s that some people articulate. We don't believe that that can sustain in the Indian market. So you have to operate at you know, combined ratios which are maybe closer to 100, not closer to 90. Got it. That is helpful, sir. Thank you so much for this. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pradeek Poddar from the Bond India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sir. Uh, hi. So just one small uh, clarification. Uh, did I hear you right saying that, you know, you have diluted your ROE aspirations uh, for growth? And hence, uh, the, the journey towards 100% combined ratio might not be something which we would look for. Yes, what we've been saying is that we would want to invest in some of these uh, segments of business, largely digital and, and health agency. And we had said that while we, on the integrated basis, you know, on a performer basis, we were about 104 odd number, if you look at a 2020 performer. We had said that we would want to bring it down closer to our normal target number of 100, but we do want to invest a bit uh, in terms of scaling up these businesses. Towards that, if the ROE comes down below 20, we are okay. It will be in the high teens, may not be 20%. But sir, is this because of competitive pressures that, or or it is just a more strategic uh, question or, or a thought process? Like what has changed for you to, you know, I remember earlier in our conversations, always the focus was on ROE and you know, not diluting the combined ratio, uh, looks like uh, there has been some change. So, a bit of both, honestly, if you see the, on the health side, it's more strategic uh, because of the investment that we, if you remember some of the conversations that we've had, that on the health indemnity side, we were building up some of the capability, both in the outpatient OPD product and the I'll take care app. Now that we've done that, we want to scale up the business. So, that's an, that's a strategic call. The rest, of course, driven by current context in the market. Uh, the if the market remains very aggressive, then uh, you know we don't want to uh, you know kind of lose market share beyond the level. If, however, market corrects, you know there will be an opportunity to bring combined down under uh, into our uh, you know comfort zone. 
but at this point in time it's a bit, bit of uh, both you know investment both in agency and also in digital to scale up the business for the future got it got it thanks thanks really helpful sir thank you anand thank you the next question is from the line of hitesh kolade from hightown securities please go ahead yeah uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity sir out of the 88000 agents that we have mentioned how many would be selling health for us and also in continuation with health uh, icic bank has started selling indemnity how much of this can we kind of uh, like go up uh, what what can be the growth path here and also is there any update on hdfc bank and access selling health for us or after varthi exa partnership so let me take it in the reverse order so in terms of the uh, you know the key banka partners that we got through the uh, acquisition uh, we are very happy with the way those partnerships are, are developing uh, as of now they are primarily focusing on uh, sme uh, and motor products but i am sure there will be opportunities to distribute health in due course uh, and if you see the growth of of that channel while the aggregate bank of partners of uh, baji as we said is grown at about 15.9% i think these two partners have grown even faster so we are quite happy with the way that uh, that those channels are shifting up uh, coming to your question on the uh, bank business look i think you know we we've, we've been talking about the fact that we had a base effect because of the uh, decision of the bank not to uh, sell benefit policies for you know from Q3 of the previous year, and that had an uh, impact for our this year number for nine months. That, and we've been saying that that uh, you know the that that base effect will play out in this quarter. What the bank has uh, decided to do is rather than selling benefit, they are keen to sell sell indemnity. So we've kind of structured suitable products for the bank, and we've launched it. I don't want to give any guidance on whether the number will go up or not or down because. Uh, at this point in time we just started selling some of these products we will see how it goes along and then we will we will see uh, what numbers we see but at least the base uh, the negative base that we had of the benefit book being there the previous year and uh, you know that business being stopped this year that effect has now gone and your last question on hitesh uh, on the number of uh, health agents within that number will be about 6000 Okay, uh, so, so last quarter we have added about eight to ten thousand agents. So not all of them are obviously health. Uh, it's, yeah, it's we have three different. separate uh, agency channels. One is motor, one is health, one is SME. Of course, we, you know, we work across the channels and try to cross them, but we have dedicated channels for the three segments. Okay. Okay, and so just learn now. So if I can squeeze in, our advance premium number for March is lower than December. So that means motor TP growth is more towards uh, CV. Is that understanding correct, or it is towards uh, renewal premiums? A combination of both, Hitesh. I think relatively uh, you are right to some extent, given the fact that let's say the contribution of uh, CV in the overall motor growth is also kind of uh, higher in FY22 compared to FY21. So that's obviously one contributor. Having said that, I think equally, if you look at some of the older as we are, as what we had said, even at the time when these long-term policy guidelines had come in, we had said it will start to kind of peak, maybe after attaining almost about three to between the third and the fourth year, this number of advanced premium will pretty much start to kind of peak, uh, because you will obviously start to have um, the incremental numbers on advanced premium will be more reflective of what kind of growth that we have that we will achieve on the motor portfolio, which is what we have seen. in fy 20 21 22 this is the year where <clears throat> it's been almost about 3 years since the time the new long term guidelines had come so hence that's the reason why you see a small dip in so far as the advanced premium numbers at 31st march is correct so uh, you know the other thing that we've been saying that new vehicle sales both for private car and two wheelers have been quite low that has also had an impact sure sir thank you that's it from my side thank you Next question is from the line of Nidesh Shain from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Two questions. Sir. Firstly, a lot of uh, insurtech companies are scaling their POS uh, uh, agency business. Uh, so, how do we view this business? Uh, do we see it as a, a threat or opportunity for us? Uh, secondly, uh, in the new vehicle, uh, new private cars uh, segment, have we uh, have we lost uh, all the market share trends in that segment? Uh, have we lost market share or gained market share in last one year? And just in the new private private car segment. 
So, Nidish, in, again, second question first. In the nine months, we lost market share. Uh, that's why our, you know, if you see our motor numbers were uh, quite low in the, you know, relatively lower in the first nine months. This, uh, you know, this quarter, we have not lost as much. We've lost a little bit in the private car side, but made up in the two-wheeler and the CV side uh, for the quarter. And our sense is that even on private car, the recalibration or the portfolio adjust alignment that we wanted to do, given the pricing aggression, we've largely, largely behind us. So we should, we hope to see, uh, you know, market share even in private car segment being held on. Uh, coming back to your first question on insure tech, look, uh, in, you know, at this point in time, we are partnering with almost all of them. Uh, in terms of whether in the long term it's uh, it's positive or negative, you know, there's one positive in terms of them potentially expanding. As of now, they're not expanding the market really because they're uh, more playing like aggregators, aggregating existing agents under their uh, their uh, umbrella. But we hope that in due course they will expand the market and, and grow. And we are uh, at this point in time we are working with all of them. Uh, on the POS side, uh, we are not with the digital aggregator, but on this segment, we are we are working with them. Sure, sir, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nishin Chavate from Kodak Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Nishin. Yeah. Uh, my question actually pertains to the last two slides of the presentation. And uh, uh, I think what you mentioned is that uh, based on the revised disclosures, uh, you have split the reserving, uh, you know, triangle disclosures between Motor TP and the others. Now, I think what we can see over here is that the releases in the other segment is higher than Motor TP. Uh, if I look at it, you know, I mean, over the years. So how should one really be reading it? What is the, the interpretation of it? Is it something that uh, you're reserving as a little more conservative in the other segment? Or, I mean... If you, if you could just help us interpret this. So, Nishchint, if you look at, uh, so far as approach to reserving is concerned, fundamentally there is no change uh, in terms of the process that we follow uh, for the current year relative to, let's say, what approach we have been following uh, over the last several years. Uh, and the approach is to kind of uh, reserve conservatively at source. And as and when each of this portfolio kind of starts to develop in terms of lost experiences, you will possibly see whether the reserve estimates that we've made at source was adequate or not so adequate. In some of these lines, the conservatism of reserving will start to play out faster. However, in certain long tail lines of businesses, that will obviously take a relatively longer time for you to reflect whether the reserves that we carried at source were adequate or not. Uh, slide 29 and 30, the point that you made, other than motor third party lines of businesses are predominantly businesses which have a relatively shorter tail in so far as claim settlements is concerned, which is why the play out of the actual loss experience tends to be faster and you are able to kind of see relative to the amount of reserves that we carry, you are able to see, let's say, small amount of reserve releases. However, in so far as the third party book is concerned, as I said, that's a book which is long tail and obviously it takes a longer horizon before which one can say whether the amount of reserves that we have kind of built in is appropriate or not. Having said that, if you look at the information that gets put out, whether it is for motor third party or whether it is for the other, the other lines of businesses other than third party, the information is given for the last 10 years. And you can see over the last 10 year cycles, even after 10 years of uh, development, both with respect to the motor third party triangles that you see, as well as the other than motor third party triangles, based on the loss development experiences, our approach to reserving has played out to be conservative at source, and both of them reflect small amount of reserve releases in the portfolio. And if I can add to what Gopal said, we are actually very happy that this disclosure has been mandated by the regulator. We've been asking for this disclosure for a long, long time. Uh, we were the first company to disclose, and now we are seeing more disclosures. It's not just the two, uh, you know, pool and aggregate. There are further disclosures of, uh, now, you know, TP business for the running book uh, and the non-TP business, which is a very good development. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vargav Dasgupta for closing comments.
Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And uh, again, you know, if you have any other separate questions, feel free to reach out. We'll be happy to take them separately. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Take care and good night. Thank you very much. On behalf of ICICI Lombard General Insurance Company Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.